Okay, after the flood, what happened? Well, after the flood, we see the mountains rising up and the valleys sinking down. And if, as the mountains would rise up, the waters would rush off, causing great amounts of erosion. And that's what we see all over the earth today. We see evidence that the amount of water that was on the earth at one time was much greater than what we have today. We see evidence of tremendous uh, amounts of erosion in the past. And what we see here, this picture of the Grand Canyon, we see evidence of the layers themselves left exposed by this erosion. We see evidence of the layers that were laid down probably during this time of the flood. And contained within rock layers all over the earth, we find the evidence of things which used to live on this earth but are now buried in the, in the rocks and have become fossils. Well, after the flood, we also see that there was a rainbow. And apparently, this was the first time that Noah had seen the rainbow. And God attached a sign to that rainbow. He said, whenever you see this bow in the sky, it's my sign to you to remember that I will never again destroy the whole entire earth with water. Now think about it for a minute. Sometimes people tell us, oh, that wasn't really a worldwide flood. It, it just flooded the known world at that point in time. It was just a local flood. Well, if that's the case, then God has broken his promise over and over and over again, hasn't he? Because God promised he'd never again flood the world with water. And so we can't look back in Genesis and say, oh, that was just a local flood. It really indicates in Genesis it was a worldwide flood. After the flood, we also see conditions different on the earth than they were before the flood. Perhaps the canopy was gone at that time. We don't know exactly what happened, but from the biblical record, we can plot a graph that will show us the decline of the ages. And the people began to, to live shorter and shorter ages after the flood. After the flood also, the conditions would have been right for an ice age. Now, we don't believe there were a whole bunch of ice ages like the evolutionists teach, but we do believe there was probably one ice age. The uh, water in the oceans after the flood was probably much warmer than it is today. That could have been partly because of the earth movements that took place likely during the time of the flood. It could have been because of increased volcanism or volcanoes, and we have evidence of tremendous amounts of, of volcanoes and lava flows and so on about that period of time. Any of those things could have helped to increase the temperature of the water in the oceans. Now, if you have warm water in the oceans, what happens? You have a lot of evaporation, don't you? And so you have this warm, moist air evaporating. As it moves over the continents, it cools and condenses, and we begin to get rain. And then as it cools more, eventually we get snow and ice, and those things mount up and pile up until we get a glacier age started. That probably took place, we believe, sometime a few hundreds to a thousand years after the flood.